That's going to give us the range of usual values on the right-hand side. You with me on that? The, the maximum that we could get. If we subtract two standard deviations, I know I'm writing this backwards, but hopefully you see it. If we subtract two standard deviations, we're going to get the range on the lower limit for the range of our usual values on the left-hand side. So outside of mu plus two sigma, that's two standard deviations, two sigmas, two standard deviations. And mu minus two sigma. That gives us the maximum and the minimum values that we have for considered usual versus unusual. Let's see if we can do this with our weighted die, okay? For our weighted die, what's our mean? Guys, you gotta be better. I, I need more participation in this. I need you to be here and, and with it and participate. You can't just sit in the classroom and kind of just sit there. Mr. Miller drew awesome. I know. I know. All right. But you gotta be participating because it won't sink in. If you're just listening, that's great. You're here. But if you're not participating, not verbalizing, not thinking about it, that's really not sinking in there that great. So let's get with it today. What's my mean? I want to add two standard deviations to the right and subtract two standard deviations from the left. To the left, what is my standard deviation? So I want to add two times one point one six. So I'm adding two point three two. Very good. If I add two point three two, so notice that where we're getting two point three two. That's two times one point one six. Add that on to the three point four. How much do you get? Grace, say that one more time for me. 5.72. Now, if I subtract it, so if I'm subtracting 2, point, 2 times 1.16, maybe I'll put these up top so it's not as confusing. So we're adding two times the standard deviation and subtracting two times the standard deviation. That's giving us two standard deviations to the right, two standard deviations to the left. I get five point, oh I erased it. What did you add there? Good. And to the left hand side we're going to take 3.4 minus that. Negative? No. One point? Oh, because I subtracted it differently. I'm sorry. That's okay. That's okay. That gives us the range of usual values. Now, now, wait a second. What are we doing here? What's our procedure? What, what's actually accomplished in our, our, our procedure here? <coughs> what now? Find if it's usual or unusual. Okay, what are we finding is usual or unusual? What are we actually doing in this experiment? I mean, now which numbers would be unusual. What are those numbers coming from? So we're rolling a die. We're trying to figure out what numbers on a die would be usual and what numbers would be unusual. Does this tell it to you? Yeah. How about two? Is two a usual number to get on, on this particular die? Yeah. Remember that this is a weighted die, right? Yeah. This is a weighted die. Is two usual? Where's two? Is two over here? No. no. Is two over here? No. Okay. Do you understand that these are my usual values? My usual value start at 1.08 and end at 5.72, but you're thinking, wait a second, this is a die, right? Can you roll a 1.08 on a die? Probably not, but this gives us the range. This gives us a minimum. Anything below that is not going to be considered usual. Anything above this is not going to be considered usual. So can you tell me, are there any unusual rolls? One in six. One in six. Is one in this range? No, then one's unusual. Is two in this range? Yes, two between 1.08 and 5.7. How about three? Is three usual? Definitely. How about four? How about five? How about six? So we have two unusual numbers. The numbers one, <coughs> I'll put them in quotations here, one and six are unusual. Two, three, four, and five 
hey, it falls in that range. Those are considered usual values. You know, there's also one more thing I need to tell you. I haven't explained this until, until right now because right now it's going to really come into play in a little while. We can also do this simply by looking at the probabilities. You may have read this in one of your earlier sections. It said, well, the probability is 0 0.03. Is that usual or unusual? You remember talking about that in your homework? We asked you, according to the probability, was it usual or unusual? And you probably had to read the book, right? You had to read the book to find that out. And it said that any probability that's less than 0 0.05 or less than 5% would be considered unusual. Not your head if you're with me on that. Any probability less than 5%. Why is it 5%? Why is it 5%? You remember looking at that? And we said two standard deviations was the same thing as a z-score of 2 or negative 2. What percentage of the data falls between two standard deviations? What percent? Remember the empirical rule. You need to know the empirical rule. The empirical rule said within one standard deviation, within one standard deviation from the mean, you get how much percent of the data? 60, 60, one higher than 67, 68. If I extend that to two standard deviations, please be listening here. If I extend that to two standard deviations, what percentage is in that? 95. If I extend to three standard deviations, you get 99.7. Did those numbers ring a bell? So here's the idea. If usual and unusual is within two standard deviations, and there's 95% of the data within those two standard deviations, how what percent of the data is outside of those two standard deviations? 5%. 5%. That means the pro that's where we're getting that 5% from. It's the same rule. Right? It's just saying if the probability is less than 5%, you are outside of those two standard deviations. Therefore, you are going to have an unusual probability. Does that make sense to you? So same idea, it's just a different way of looking at it without a graph or without the standard deviation idea. So according to the probability, if the probability of an event is less than 5%, you have something that's unusual. So if probability of some event is less than or equal to 0 0.05 or 5%, A, whatever A is, is considered unusual. This means if it's greater than 0 0.05, we have something that is, of course, usual. Can you tell me, just by looking at my probability distribution, everyone look at the board over there on the left-hand side, the probability distribution, can you see those probabilities? Do any of those tell you right off the bat which are usual and unusual? I'll check it out. Which one is unusual? One, that's 5%. Less than or equal to 5%. So 0 0.05, that's unusual. 0 0.05, that's also unusual. It matches up with what we talked about here. These ones are considered usual. How many people understood that? Good. We kind of feed into the next one. Let's do one more example on that. You know, if you flipped a coin a thousand times, coin with heads and tails on it, the probability of getting exactly a certain number of heads is pretty rare. For instance, if I said you're going to flip a coin a thousand times. What's the probability that you're going to get exactly five hundred one heads? Hey, let's think about that for a second, okay? So you're flipping this coin. There's only two outcomes, right? I hope there's only two outcomes. You either get a head or you can get a tail. Now you're sitting there flipping this coin, you're counting up, okay, there's a head, there's a tail, there's a head, there's a head, there's a tail, three, three tails in a row, whatever, get some more heads. What's the probability that after a thousand flips of that coin, 
you're going to get exactly 501 heads. Is that likely to happen, do you think? Exactly 501 heads. Could it happen? Absolutely. Could you get 300 heads exactly? Could you get one head and 999 tails? Could that actually physically happen? Yes, it could. You could get a head, and then for the rest of your flips, you get 990. Would that is that likely to happen? No. Is it likely to get exactly 501 heads? Probably more more likely than getting only one head. But it's still pretty rare, right? Because you get anywhere from like 450 to 550. That that would probably be reasonable, right? You know, it's 50-50 to get a head. So typically, you'd expect somewhere in that range, wouldn't you? Would you expect exactly 500 heads? I mean, honestly, if you're flipping a coin and you flip it 10 times, are you expecting exactly five heads every time? Probably not. If you flip it a thousand times, you're probably not expecting exactly 500 heads or exactly 501 heads. This probability is very rare. It's not gonna. It's not going to happen often. In fact, the probability of this, I did this earlier, is 0 0.00252. Or a little over 2%. That means that if you flip a coin a thousand times, there's a 2.5% 2 point, point zero zero two five two, .0252. There's a 2.5% chance that you're going to get exactly 501. Is that usual or unusual, do you think? Is, this prob is the probability of this happening usual or unusual? unusual? Look at the probability. Is it less than or equal to 0 0.05? It's less than that. This is less than 0 0.05. That makes this very unusual. So the way you look at this, you say, oh, you know what, that I calculated the probability, now you don't know how to do this yet, I'm going to tell you in about 10 minutes. You don't know how to do this, but you look at the probability, if that probability is less than or equal to 0 0.05, you know you have something that's unusual. This was unusual, this was unusual, this one is definitely unusual. Even though there's lots of digits over here, look at the value of this number, it's 0 0.02, right? This is not bigger than 0 0.05, it's less than 0 0.05. How many people understood that? That's unusual. Good. Now, what's the probability? Think about this one. What's the probability of getting 501 or more heads? Hey, what does that or more what does that mean? What's or more mean? More, okay, so if you have more, if you have uh, ten dollars or more, how much could it cost? Could it cost ten dollars? Could it cost eleven dollars? Could it cost nine dollars? Not if it's ten dollars or more. Now if it's ten dollars or more, it could cost exactly ten, or anywhere above that, it could cost a thousand. You with me? So. When I say 500 or more heads, that's 500 and or 501 or, sorry, did I say 500? If I say 501 or more, it means it could be 501 or 502 or 503 or 504 or 505. Do I need to keep going? No. It could include anything that is 501 or greater than that up to 1,000. Does this include the 1,000? Would a thousand heads count as 501 or more? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, anything bigger than 501 and including 